morning. Kind of excited today. I'm going to do a little flying. We haven't flown for a while, so we're going to take this plane up, just exercise it, make sure I know what I'm doing, make sure everything still works. So we'll come along, and then we'll start, start the pre-flight checks and how to check the oil after we do this flight. So I won't do the pre-flight now, but I'll show you about the oil checking. Let's come along. We'll go for a little flight. Okay, I've taken this video before we actually are flying the airplane. And I just want to show you, this plane sat, oh boy, it sat almost three weeks and you can see the oil looks low and it will but I checked it last time we were done flying I know it's not that low and I'll take another video and I'll show you what it looks like when we put the airplane away then we also write down what oil we use the 2380 oil so hello we're in the airplane we're gonna power up the first thing we'll do is we'll put the parking brake on turn the batteries on and then we'll come down here and we'll wait for stuff to activate. The other, yesterday I did, made the video from all the uh, update on the database. So they'll come up normal now, almost normal. The first thing I like to do is check the batteries when I turn it on. It, what it does is it makes a check later when I do the electrical emergency test. I don't have to wait for the 10 seconds to check the battery. Here's some clicking, that's pretty normal. So I come down here, the first thing I do is I'm gonna turn the speaker off. So I don't hear that. Notice all our databases here are current. Now again, the airport directory is not current, but I do not update that one. We don't use that one. So the charts are good, the nav is good, the obstacle is good. So we're all good there. So I'll come here. Now I'll check the batteries. The batteries are plenty good. They're not good for a battery start, but they're good enough for flying. So I'll come down here, pull up the electrical page. The GPU is connected. 28.5 so I'm going to turn it on and when I turn it on you'll see the shed buses come on. In a normal in a normal startup you'd hear the air conditioner come on but remember I have it off down here and we'll just leave it off because we don't want it to blow cold air in here. It's only about 34 degrees Fahrenheit and I also have the ADS probes. So there we are. We'll wait for them to get this fuel and then we'll uh, start it up. What we're going to do now is install warning protection system test or the SWPS. Put your test switches in the stall, warning protection system setting, you pull this back, and push the button, and you're going to hear a warning, Tom. and it'll get on the speaker, Tom. Tom. and then hold on to this just lightly, Tom. Tom. and that shows us that a pressure is working, Tom. so if we hit the stall, Tom. it'll push the nose down, that's the warning protection system. It always turns the speaker off, you cannot turn it off for the test. That's how you do it. Then I will come down and turn the speaker on. I forgot to mention one more thing. After the stall test, you always want to pull back on this because it grabs the yoke and you got to release a, some sort of friction on the yoke so that it moves freely. Now it moves freely. So that's the finish of the test. Here's a video of us in Des Moines and those are airliners sitting over there stacked because their air travel is so low right now. video of the airplane taking off about how long. We actually had a fair amount of fuel on it, so it's not super light, but it is just a bit weight. So I'll let you watch the screen and we'll see how long it takes to get to speed. This is where we're testing the accumulator pressure 
for the hydraulic pressure. There's an accumulator, and as this starts creeping down, it'll go very slow, and then it'll go fast. And see right now, as the engine spool down, it's creeping, it's creeping, and it's creeping. When it gets to about that yellow barb, it'll go real fast, and that tells us that's where the accumulator pressure is. Now, you don't have to check the accumulator pressure by crawling onto the airplane. So there it's moving slow. Moving slow at about 1,800 pounds. It should start going pretty fast. We'll see. Oh, maybe a little low. And there it drops. So we know our accumulator pressure is in that 1,600 pound range. That is the start of our pre-flight for next flight. So now we'll go and we'll put the plane in the hangar and then we'll check the oil, the oil level. Someone asked about oil level. I check it every time I fly, every day. Now, the actual only accurate check is about 10 to 20 minutes after engine shutdown. So you always check when you push it in the hangar or if you're flying on a level ramp. Earlier today I took a video and I'll put it in here. I checked the oil pressure, or excuse me, the oil level after it sat and you can see it was showing low. If the plane sat for a few days, the oil level will be low. You only get an accurate check at 10 to 20 minutes after shutdown. So if you're on a level ramp flying, you check it and then you kind of keep track of it after that. But you should check it every day, but the we actually check it when we're done flying. So let's go, we'll get out and we'll check the oil levels. So here we are, we're gonna check the oil. I got the cap off because I'm gonna add oil, but it's about 10 minutes after shutdown. And if you bring it over here, you can see it's really low. So and I'm gonna show you that it looks super low from this angle. But if you get up here, you can see it's about, it's showing one quart low. Now, just to give you an idea, these are the new style where they move these sight gauges down. I never run it at full. If you run it at full, in about three hours, it'll be at half. I fill it to the half low, and I don't even get worried, and I start thinking about it, I know until it's past this little rivet. Otherwise, you're just blowing oil out the airplane. So that's about where I like to start adding oil on it, when it's just a hair blow one quart. We'll basically add a half quart of oil to this. So then a little system down here for adding oil. We have this little container here, we put oil in. It has a screen in it. Now we add, o then the oil we use, it's Eastman, it used to be X, it used to be Exxon. And I think that before was mobile toy, but it's basically 2380. The number's always been the same. That's what we use. So here we are putting that half quart of oil in. It's pretty simple, it just comes up on there. Always make sure you get the cap on. Now these aren't like the old PT6 engines on a Kinger where it'll blow the oil out within about three minutes. They got a flapper valve, but you do want to put the cap on. Now, I hope you found the video informative. Please remember to like it, subscribe if you're not, and have a great day.